Hi and welcome back to another video. I know it has definitely been a minute, but life has been lifing. It's been very hectic, but I'm happy to be back with you once again and to share a very recent adventure that we had with the twins. So of course we're in holiday season, we're in holiday mode. Um, we'll have to wait and see, you know, what the lockdown regulations are over Christmas and such. But I'm pretty sure that you are itching, you are dying to go somewhere very soon and you have worked very hard and it's time to reward yourself and your family with a holiday. So I wanted to let you know that it is possible to travel with two under two or twins. This is how we did it. One of the first things I had to do was to check and see if the accommodation was suitable for children under two and if they were indeed allowed so you'll find that in certain places they don't allow any children under 4 under 12 and 16 you know they'll have those guidelines so before you book before you put your money down on this vacation spot please call ahead and ensure that they do allow kids um, under two or infants babies etc so we went for a family lodge type setting it wasn't too high end it wasn't too uh, hotel luxury nah I just wanted to get out there be one with nature and just breathe some clean air for a couple of days so that's what we did in Malanga I called ahead to check to see if they would allow the kids if they had any special equipment such as high chairs or cots available that they could move into our room before check-in What's wonderful about traveling with babies these days is that you find certain establishments have uh, childcare services, so nannies that are available to stay with the children um, should you want to go for a massage or should you want to do an activity, quad biking, whatever that may be, or you just need a moment of peace, a moment alone pop those kids over to the child care uh, facility in your uh, place of accommodation but you need to call ahead this was all part of the research and really being anal about <laughs> and really being thorough about your accommodation and how your family is set to travel also for emergency purposes you'd like to check certain things like the closest hospital um, is there a pharmacy close by things of that nature the second tip that really helped is that we afforded ourselves extra travel time i knew that it would take us the whole day leaving Joburg, getting to malanga to where we were staying and just not really setting any heavy itinerary for that day except just traveling at a good pace on the road stopping for food nappy changes things of that sort so don't put yourself on a hard time limit um, especially if it's the first time you're traveling long distance with your little ones just give yourself you know that ease of time don't don't tie in too many things for that day just take it easy an essential thing to remember is to plan your pit stops so when you'll be fueling up when you'll be changing nappies when will bottle time or a meal time be allocated to your travel so ensure that you think about it quite a bit so say your drive is five hours or six hours at the three hour mark which is usually when you know young ones start getting cranky or at least that's in our experience where will you be at that time and will you be able to stop in a safe and secure location it's also very important to get out of the car stretch your legs stretch the baby's legs i mean the car seats look very comfortable but just think of yourself ladies you'll know what i mean if you've been seated for a very long time you start to get that numbing bum sensation you just get bored of sitting down I always think of going to the salon to get braids in. At some point you just want to stand up and stretch your legs a little bit. So think of it that way for your tiny tots as well. They might not be walking just yet, like ours, um, at the time when we took them. They were 10, 10 months, 10 months. Ensure that you pack for all weather. You may have checked the forecast a week or so before your departure and it says sunny skies, but when you get there, it is pouring with rain. You just want to be prepared, especially because you're traveling with little ones. So um, warm clothing, even though it might not be winter, we're heading into, you know, it's a hot season, it's December. 
When you're packing, also consider things like nappies. Take a full pack along with you. You never know who's going to catch a bout of diarrhea or <laughs> what might start happening and you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you need um, your huggies or your pampers in the dead of the night, in the middle of the bush somewhere. Nah, that's not ideal. Sure, you could pop into a convenience store, but I just enjoy being prepared. So take a fresh full pack of nappies, wipes, uh, ensure that you have more than one bum cream, um, specifically if your little ones are prone to bum rashes and there's only one kind of cream that you use in the household, ensure that you have that with you. Don't forget your sterilizer. Mommies, this is super, super duper important. Um, whether you're breastfeeding or whether your little ones are getting formula, you want to ensure that you can still maintain those same hygiene practices that you do at home while on holiday. If you have one of those um, microwave sterilizers, maybe call ahead to find out the size of the microwave because you could find that your sterilizer is too big. We have an electrical one that we plug in, ensure that you have your, the correct kind of adapter. Uh, you may have a you may have a round um, adapter pin, whereas they have those little, you know, slots already built in. So ensure that you have all those correct things, your bottle brush, your uh, dishwashing liquid or your bottle cleaning solution, NBNB. That way, you know, you can pack babies uh, milk or prepare babies milk um, well in advance, store it in the mini bar fridge or the fridge that's in your room and just sort it. The only thing you need to do is time when your baby is hungry, warm up that milk and you're golden. So since we took an early vacation, I decided that it would be great to save money and DIY some of the purees. I really do enjoy creating different recipes and combinations, fruit, vegetable, meat, etc. and egg um, purees for the babies. So I thought instead of having to buy food all the time, let's just ensure that for as many days as I can cover and safely refrigerate and store the food that they will have their purees ready for them. So that was a little money saver tip. Of course buy uh, pouches or whatever it is that you're comfortable with using to ensure that you know when you're on the go you're not worrying about a million containers uh, as you're going out for your activities in the baby bag you've just got your little pouch it's easy it's convenient half of the time you don't need a bowl just make sure that you have a clean uh, spoon and you're good to go remember to pack your medicines and your home comforts your medicines whatever the baby may need um, a paracetamol solution a, um, a, a nose sterilizer you know when they get congested uh, congested and you know you gotta that, that water, those droplets, ensure if your baby's um, battling an ear infection or anything like that, that you pack all of those medicines. You don't want to have to try and find a doctor while you're on your vacation to get a prescription to a medication that you just simply left at home. That of course goes for you, but packing for the babies, um, NBNB, do not forget things like that. And home comforts, I mean, their favorite blankie, their favorite toys, things that you know they can um, you know easily be distracted with if we're going through a little bit of a uh, of a troubling fit ensure that they have those home comforts um, it could be a pillow it could be anything just ensure that whatever is available to you that is easily transportable that you pack that for your little one so we had lots of fun with the babies. I'll put up a slideshow of some of our pictures and videos from our vacation, but it was very bold of us and daring to start family vacation so soon. And it was something that we both needed. We needed to escape um, the, the sort of, what is it, the hamster wheel of life, of work and all of that, and just insert a little bit of play for us. So it did take lot of effort but that effort ensured that we could have fun while on our vacation because we weren't worried about uh, missing pieces and all sorts of things and let me let you know how important the medication is so Pisa started teething when we were in Malanga so he sprouted his first two or he cut his first two bottom teeth and I had the medicines the gummy 
rubs and all things ready so ensure that um you're ready for that you never know what could happen it does take a lot of effort it does take a lot of time but most importantly you must have fun I think it's a wonderful time to start traveling with the young ones and provided that they're of a certain age right and you can totally do it it is possible so remember call ahead find out all that you can possibly find out about the place that you'll be staying I mean we're online we're on social media um, this information is readily available for you if you can pack a cot you can do that but we have small cars so we left the cots what we opted to do was to actually give up the main bedroom on our holiday and uh, dedicate that to the baby so we created that as their space and yeah well, we had fun fun was had thank you so much for watching this video comment below and tell me about your experiences first time traveling with a baby or babies two under two we had to drive i'm not ready to fly yet i think we'll be ready to fly come six or seven crying babies on a plane mm -mm, man 